Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast NFL Playoff Edition. That is right. We are here. The NFL Playoffs are about to begin kind of the busy season for our head producer, the NFL expert, Mr. Justin Ackendale. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, brother. How you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year. And with the new year, NFL playoffs are here, and the last two weeks did not disappoint in terms of NFL drama, man. They never do. It's the league that um keeps on giving. There's always something going on, literally. Always fucking something. <laughs> yeah, no, you could, they're never a dull week. There's n- Even week 18, where a lot of teams may be resting, it's, there's still a lot being played for that last week. Yeah, absolutely. The Eagles had to um, win their game to be the number one seed. The Packers had the win to get in. Mm-hmm. The um, Dolphins were fighting for a um, playoff spot on Sunday. Yeah, there are a lot of stakes going on there in um, Week 18 for sure. So, Justin, man, let's get right into it. How do you want to start with the playoffs? What do you want? To, how are we starting? I was just going to um, pretty much go game by game and um, okay. tell you pretty much how the how the seasons went. What I expect from the matchup, what I think is going to win that much, and then we we can do whatever quick hits you got after that. Yes, sir. Let's get right into it, man. It looks like we're starting off in the NFC. Yes, we'll start off in the order of the games. So mm-hmm. this is the first game on Saturday. We got the seven seed. I don't, I don't know what network has which. Actually, yeah. I yeah. can find. No, nah, no. Nah, I got, I got okay. pulled up. <laughs> I actually got pulled up. So, yeah. This is the 4.30 early game on Saturday. We got the seven-seeded Seahawks at the second-seeded 49ers on Fox. Mm-hmm. The Seahawks, they were they were 9-8 on the season. It was the first year after Russell Will, after the Russell Wilson era. So year one, the Russell um, of the Geno Smith era now because Geno Smith was a starting quarterback. He delivered. He delivered in his first season as a quarterback for the um, Seattle Seahawks. I mean, he's a Pro Bowler this year. Seventy percent completion presents, four thousand two hundred eighty-two yards, thirty touchdowns, eleven picks. Like reading those numbers out loud are crazy. Like I never thought I was seeing a Geno Smith season where he threw thirty fucking touchdowns. But we got this year. They still got DK Metcalf and um, Tyler Lockett and Kenneth Walker. They all had thousand yard seasons, and their defense drafted. Um, a fifth rounder, forget what school he went to, Tariq Wollin. See, I don't know what school he went to, so he wasn't supposed to be a factor, but he ended up being one. I already have a be quick one. hit for you. Well, Obviously, no one expected the Seahawks and Geno to do what they did, and Geno also broke Russell Wilson's single-season passing record. How bad does this make look Russell Wilson, man? <laughs> he Yeah, he definitely basically forced him way out, so he looks like... Yeah, he look. Everyone knows he's one of the corniest people in the NFL now. Yes. And after that Denver season mm-hmm. of him being told trash, it, I think he has to. Um, I think he has to bounce back off of it. I, I just don't. I just don't believe Russell Wilson is that bad. Like, I think it. I think a lot had to do with Nathaniel Hackett being the coach, and Denver had a lot of injuries. I just can't. I just don't think in one year you go from, you know, you're a top five to seven quarterback in the league and you, you go total trash. Like, I feel like there has to be more steps to, steps to that process. It was literally like one year to the next, he's total shit. I've never actually seen a trade like this work out in the fact that you get all those st- the picks from Denver and you make the playoffs with Geno and Denver has absolutely nothing. And, there's, no. and they were at home early. No, the, that cupboard's empty. Yeah, the Seahawks, you know, win or lose this game against the 49, 49ers, they're in a great spot. They have Denver's, um, and I know you know what pick it is, but I know it's like a top, yeah, I know it's like a, a top five pick. So they have, mm-hmm. they have a cup, they have Denver's first round pick, I think, the next two years. So Denver is back again next year. Seattle's going to have another high, high ass pick. They're just in a great situation. Got some player, got a couple players, um, from Denver in that deal as well. So, yeah, and making the playoffs with Geno Smith, I don't know if you're going to, you know, run it back with Geno Smith the next year, you know, think about drafting one of the um, one of the top prospects in the draft. But, yeah, they're definitely in a better spot than um, 
with Denver Broncos right now. That's for damn sure. Comeback player of the year, Geno Smith, book it. It's got to. Got to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, come back from what? I mean, shit. He was not like he was a starter or anything. Like, nigga was a career backup. I uh, true, but he he put the line out there, man. They wrote him off. He didn't write back. He did. I mean, four over four thousand pass yards and thirty touchdowns. I, I don't care what, how much he's got his pass for because they all pass for over four hundred, four thousand. But the yeah. thirty touchdowns, like that's rare. Like, but, the elite guys throw for thirty touchdowns. But unfortunately, fairy book things all come to an end, and their season ends this weekend. <laughs> yeah, the 49ers, they went 13 and um, four this year. They're currently on a 10 game winning streak, the 49ers are. They spent the entire year essentially trying to get rid, well, not the entire year. They spent the whole offseason putting the plan in the motion to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. They started Trey Lance. Trey Lance is the first two games of the year. He tears his ACL in week two, and then for the next 10 games, they um, start Jimmy G. He gets put on IR um, with a foot injury, and then Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy comes in. Last pick of um, the 2022 draft, and he comes, and he goes 5-0 with the 49ers, and here we are. They have a home playoff game, and they are the second seed in um, NFC. They also trade for Chris McCaffrey during the season, which also helped their offense a lot. Justin, I know a lot of, I, I for the people I listen to, a lot of people haven't brought this up, so I'm going to bring this up to you as my NFL expert. I do think, and I've said it on this pod multiple times, when healthy, this team is actually the best team in football. If they do win this Super Bowl, what the hell do they do with the quarterbacks? I know Jimmy's out, but what do you do with tr- you can't go from winning with if you win with Purdy to just go back to Trey. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the I don't think the Forty Nine ers are going to win the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy though. Well, they're gonna make some they, they they can probably get there, but I don't I don't think they're going to beat whoever comes out the AFC if Brock Purdy is their quarterback, unfortunately. But if they do if they do win the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy, you just keep your you just keep your options open. I mean, Brock Purdy was a um, he was the last pick of the draft, so you're not paying him. You're not paying Trey Lance. You already know you're going to get rid of Jimmy Gar- Jimmy Garoppolo. He's done in San Francisco, so you just you just sit on and wait and see what happens. I mean, obviously, Brock Purdy will go into next year as the starter, as um, Trey Lance is recovering from injury, and then you see how it goes from there. It's crazy because I mean Jimmy G was winning when he was there too. Then he got hurt. Then Purdy. They they know how to do it with quarterbacks. Like you follow the script with the system and all of that. It's just amazing what they're doing over there. Yeah, it's it's wild. I mean, it, it literally doesn't matter. The Forty ers this season, it did not matter who the quarterback was. They were they're going to win games. I mean, they they only lost four times all season long, and they're currently on ten game winning streak. So they re- they lost all those games early. So with that one, I mean, who do you who do you have in this? The line is ten. It's a lot of points. It is a lot of points, and I know San Francisco swept swept the Seahawks this season, but the past three matchups before that has all been Seattle. I know that's Russell Wilson led Seattle Seahawks, but mm-hmm. you know, still the Seahawks. I think the 49ers won this game. I think Gino can keep it close and um cover, but I don't I don't know if he can cover that defense. They what one thing I forgot to mention about the 49ers, they got the best defense in the NFL. They got the number yes. one great defense in the NFL this year. So their defense can if they can really get pressure on Geno Smith and start causing mistakes, it can get ugly. But Pete Carroll seems to get his guys up and ready to play the 49ers. So I think the Steelhawks cover, but the 49ers definitely won't win this game because 10, 10 is a lot of points. Yeah. You go to the next game, which is literally a pick em from some of the things I saw yesterday, and I'm struggling with this one, so I'm really hoping you can help me out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not even from like a betting thing, from like who I think is actually going to win this game. The Chargers oh, I know. and Jackson. I know. We're all struggling. Vegas don't know who the fuck going to win this game either. We all don't know as a collective football public. 
And help us through it, Justin. Like, how did these teams get here? And like, what are you thinking? How this game could go? This is the eight fifteen game on Saturday night. Yeah, so we got the Los Angeles Chargers, the fifth seed, going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, the fourth seed. The Chargers were ten and seven. The um, Chargers are also a one point favorite going into this game. Chargers were ten seven this. This season, they're battling injuries with big name guys like Joey Bosa, Mike Williams. They're on Pro Bowl um, tackle. Rashawn Slayer went on the IR early, and I just saw while I was watching ESPN before I got on the podcast that they activated him. No, he's back to practice, Mm -hmm. so he can be activated, activated soon. He won't play this week, but potentially they win this game. They can have him for the rest of the playoffs, so that's good news for them. Chargers were six and six going into the, their Sunday night football game against Miami, and this is when the Chargers really started to um, really started to um, pick up a stride. Get they are getting healthy. They got some of their guys back. They um, got their receivers back specifically that game, and they absolutely dog walked the Dolphins. I mean, the Dolphins couldn't do anything against them. Couldn't run the ball, and Chargers' um, run defense is terrible. I mean, this is two years in a row now where they're run defense has been pretty bad and yeah the chargers lost the last game of the season against denver in an odd game because they play their starters into the fourth quarter and baltimore lost in the 1 p.m window so they really didn't have any they weren't playing for absolutely anything they weren't playing for a damn thing and left their starters and damn near that whole game and mike williams got hurt again he had um a back injury. They actually carted him off in that game, so we don't know his status for this weekend. Then we got the um, the Jacksonville Jaguars, one of my um, one of my darling teams. I mean, they started the season three and three and seven, and then finish and then ended up finishing nine and eight, winning um week eighteen to get into the playoffs, being the Tennessee Titans twenty sixteen. Towards the end of the year, Trevor Lawrence reminded us why he was the number one pick last year. He started making the throws, started um, playing well under pressure. He was poised. He he was just good. He was just literally doing that number one pick type of stuff. For the game, for this game, I don't know who the hell going to win. <laughs> Honestly, because I mean they're they're two they're they're pretty much two similar teams. I mean, the Chargers. Anything that goes wrong will go wrong. And I know Stephen A. Smith says about the Cowboys, but it is so true with the Chargers as well. I mean, miss kicks, fucking just bullshit. I don't know. The Chargers are <laughs> have been cursed forever. And then Jacksonville, I mean, they bite themselves in the foot too a lot too. Like, I don't know. I mean, Trevor Lawrence has 12 fumbles on the season. I can't remember how many he ended up losing, but he put the ball in the turf on him. 12 times so that's a uh, that could happen on sunday travis Etienne, who had a great year this year after the um trey james robinson but um you know he lost five fumbles this year so yeah they'll turn the ball over to you these two played in week three which is a long ass time ago yes, so these it teams is. really are, yeah they really aren't the same the jack jacksonville won that game on the road um 38 to 10 but it's hard like it's hard picking this game i'm gonna go with the jags in this game because they're at home and I like Doug Peterson a lot better than um, Brandon Staley as a coach. I think too with Jacksonville, which is so crazy because it's it's really almost the same exact team, how big coaching and distractions matter in the NFL. Like they really had no distractions. They had a veteran coach um, with Doug Peterson, obviously a Super Bowl winning coach. And you went from where you were with the urban saga to hosting a playoff game like that's nothing short of amazing and like you said with trevor i mean now he's established himself in that team and you have two young quarterbacks going at it which fun fact which you think is kind of crazy patrick mahomes is the oldest quarterback in the afc playoffs was he like 26 27 that is the oldest quarterback in the afc playoffs I mean, what quarterbacks are really good? What older quarterbacks are really good in the AFC, though? No, I mean, you're right. They- all The AFC is all young. And even the teams who, if something bounced their way, they would have made it, a la Pittsburgh with Kenny Pickett, or like 
the Jets of when they were starting like Zach Wilson and stuff like that. They're all young too. AFC, it's officially all the young guns. Yeah, it's exciting to see how quickly because you know, like twenty years ago in the NFL, these quarterbacks did not pop this quickly. Well, they have like, no choice now. Yeah, they do have no choice now. But yeah, they they used to pop like this. So yeah, all these guys hitting their stride literally at the same time, like they're all in their primes literally right now. Like Josh Allen, Mahomes, Burrow. They're all in their primes right now. So they're just gonna be shit probably for the next ten years just beating each other's heads and uh making it make it out of the AFC. It's gonna be exciting. Uh, in terms of Jacksonville and the Chargers, I just feel like I feel like the X factor is probably gonna be Doug Peterson out executing the Chargers coach. Yeah, I mean other than that, like these teams are pretty even. Jacksonville bought a whole new receiving core led by um, Christian Kirk this year, who had a pretty good season. Mm-hmm. But it, it's going to be the team that makes the least mistakes and plays to um, clean this game. Who wins this game? You can say that about every game, but specifically with these two teams, like that's how it's going to end up going out. And then Jacksonville can establish a run game too. Like, watch out. Yeah. All right, Justin. What is the next game on the playoff slate? The next game we are at we are on Sunday now at one o'clock. Mm-hmm. We have the seven, oh god, we have the seven seated Miami Dolphins at the second seated Buffalo Bills. Buffalo is a ten and a half point favorite, and I'm pretty sure that's gone up since I typed these notes last night. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Dolphins are nine and eight on the season. They started the season eight and four before going um. One and five the rest of the year, and I'm backing into the playoffs, winning that game against the Jets. I love in the I love in the sixth game of the Jets. That was probably one of my worst beats ever. <laughs> I had Jets and the under, Jets getting three and a half, mm-hmm. and the under parlay. Obviously, there was only fucking seventeen points, so the under hit. But they were nursing that goddamn three point lead for. Pretty much the whole fourth quarter, and then the fucking Jets want to try to win the goddamn game with ten seconds left and fucking do the lateral, the lateral ruski, the lateral ruski, and fucking get a safety at the end of the game. And then like the craziest part of that shit was, I know I'm going on top of the fuck. I gotta talk about my bad beat. We just have a fuck. We just recorded an hour podcast about everyone's first time. But I've been, I'm a veteran in this goddamn game. Yes, you are. <laughs> But it's like the game goes off and they said, and so it's nine and six. You're like, oh, bet. But like the ref is clearly like making the safety signs. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, fuck. And I think I made that bet in um, FanDuel. I, I don't know which app I was using, but they're just taking forever to pay me out. And then I finally saw like 30 minutes later, the official score 11 to six and uh, fucked me out of like $100. I was, I was so. <laughs> <laughs> back to the Dolphins 1-5 the rest of the year back into the playoffs beating the Jets Sunday and then um, Tua who was in the um, you know he was on his way to being firmly in the MVP conversation yes. he would have probably he would probably won the damn thing the way Miami was going but um, he got a concussion and in my notes I put a I put it in quotation marks. Concussion against Buffalo in week three because mm-hmm. they try to say that shit was a back injury. Fine. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. The, the doubt there. Fucking four days later in Cincinnati, the next week, he gets a real he, get, he gets a real legit concussion where his fingers are doing or throwing up gang signs. Misses, misses some games after that. And then um, week 16, he played a whole half with the concussion. Is mm-hmm. what they're um is what they're saying. They were winning against um Green Bay, and then on um, the second half, two throws three picks, and um what's awful because he was concussed. Dolphins also traded for um Bradley Chubb there in the season, so they don't have to. They can get pressure with four now. They don't have to blitz as much. So that helped out the defense. And when Miami is fully healthy, like they, their offense is d- truly dangerous. Like it's truly a scary offense. I have to deal with. Have to have to go up against. Have to figure out. But. In this for this game going to Sunday, we don't know who's about to be quarterbacking the um, Dolphins. Teddy Bridgewater, and he like he can he can make the throws, but their third string to- scholar Thompson cannot throw. Like mm-hmm. I watched I watched the man for three fucking hours on Sunday. He ain't it. Jets defense is good, but 
he ain't. So if any of those two have to start, watch out. It could get ugly on Sunday. Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bills are 13 and 3. They were the Super Bowl favorites going into the year. They ended the season on seven game winning streak. Josh Allen put up his MVP like numbers 63% passion, 35 passing touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns. Just stupid stuff. Diggs had another great year. They ended the um, season rated first in DVOA, according to Football out- Outsiders. I didn't really do too much game previews because um, if Tua doesn't play, the Bills will win this game and cover the game. Yeah, this is easy money for the Bills. Like we, we've said on the preview, they need to win this year. Like This is supposed to be their year. they got to do it. And we already just talked about with like these young quarterbacks. Like You, you ain't going to have this time forever. There's, there's too much young talent there. I mean, there's Burrow there. There's Lamar. Like You're not always going to be have this opportunity. You got to do it now. They do got to do it now. They definitely played an um, inspired game on Sunday. Yes. With the DeMar Hamlin um, situation happening um, last Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, thoughts and prayers for him. I heard he um, got out of the hospital either today or yesterday. So mm-hmm. that's definitely good. The Bills definitely have a big emotional boost going up into the playoffs. Like They have the emotional edge over Every team in the AFC, no doubt. Yes. So, yeah, they can keep riding this wave of emotion after, you know, almost watching one of their brothers die on the field. Then you might be seeing Buffalo in, um, in the Super Bowl this year. Uh, next game, a team where the New York Giants in the playoffs going against the Minnesota Vikings at Minnesota. Justin. I know a long time ago you're like, man, Giants just wait because they start off five and zero, and they they held the course, man, and they're in the playoffs. They did nine seven nine seven and one on the year. They started off seven and two, and then they um went two six and one the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. So they crashed back down to earth, but shit, they still got into the playoffs. So shout out to them. Shout out to the Brian Dayball. He made Daniel Jones into um a competent starter. And then I felt like this, this project that they had to embark on, like it's honestly one of the greatest coaching um turnarounds that I ever seen. That coaching they made matters. Daniel, that's it. Coaching they, matters. Dude, they made Daniel Jones fucking viable. Like, yes, they really did. And you know what? The Giants um they ended up on Football Outsiders with the number one rated red zone um offense. And you know that that's a lot of that shit is coaching, like yes. especially with the personnel that they have on that team. Like they pretty much have Saquon Barkley, and that's that's the only offensive weapon that you're truly scared of on that team. Dale Jones can run around a little bit. I can't. I mean, I can't name a receiver, but some of these viewers probably can't name a sorry receiver for the Giants. So, yeah, it's definitely a great coaching job. They're scheming stuff up in that red zone. They're 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 doing their thing. Like big shouts to Brian Dable on the season. And then and then we have the Vikings, the Minnesota Vikings. 13-4 on the season. Um, they got a new coach, Kevin McConnell, this year. 11-0 and in one-score games. Just crazy stuff. Kirk Cousins um, play a Pro Bowl level this year. It seemed like watching Kirk, and I watch a lot of Kirk Cousins, it seems like every time he got into any bit of trouble, he was just looking towards Justin Jefferson and chucking mm-hmm. that bitch. And Justin Je- Jefferson had over 1,800 yards receiving. This year, which is insane. That's like top five all time. Vikings were a very lucky, lucky team this year. Like, there's just no, like, it's just a fact at this point. Like, teams don't want 11 one score games in a season. So, about the game on Sunday, the Vikings won their matchup in week 16, 27 to, 27 to 24 at home. I like the Giants in this game to win and cover. Both of these defenses aren't very good, so I expect it to be some points. The Vikings' um, pass defense is shaky, and the Giants' defense is definitely shaky. shaky. So I expect Kirk Cousins and um, Jefferson to light it up again. But I just think I just think um, the Giants are going to coach their way into a victory this game. I mean, they almost had them in Week 16. It's hard to be a team twice in the same season. They have the number one rated red zone offense against Minnesota's 23rd rated defense. 
I think he'll. I think Daniel Jones's feet is going to give Minnesota's defense some problems because their defense really is not good at all. At all. So, yeah, I think the I think the Vikings shrink in the spot. We know Kirk Cousins' record when um it's not one o'clock. Just to put it lightly, like he's just the numbers bear it out. He's just not very good when it's not one p.m. on Sunday when no one's watching. So yeah, I think um Giants win this game. Cover twenty six twenty four. I'll I'll bet that right now. I don't disagree. It's just, man, if Kirk Cousins loses a home playoff game to Daniel Jones, can you imagine what the hell he's going to go through, like, national news-wise? Man, like, Cousins all depression's all in. Kirk, Kirk Cousins ain't worried about that shit. And, shit, you making my case better. Kirk, Cous- Kirk Cousins under pressure, pressure, like, big pressure. I, I like the Giants win this game, and I really do. Yeah, that would be that would be something. From should we get off of Daniel Jones to we just want a playoff game on the road? Whoa, 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 whoa. they still need to get off Daniel Jones. Now. I don't know like, if you can, man. Like for what? Yeah, for yeah, who? Yes, you can. For you who? Can get, for who? I'll get Derek Carr. Oh uh, well, I don't think I think Derek Carr's going to be going elsewhere. So. I mean, I would go for Jim, him. I would. Jimmy G? Jimmy, I, I, can you honestly say at this point that Daniel Jones is not as good as Jimmy G? Daniel Jones really is a really good runner. He's a better athlete than both of those names. I don't know if Baker Mayfield will be. I, actually, I know Baker wouldn't work. In, I, I know Baker. No, wouldn't he wouldn't work there. He wouldn't work there. You're gonna win. We're gonna win, see, man. I, I can like Derek. If you get Derek, then their whole offense changes because they they don't got receivers like that. No, you would just you would have to draft them and acquire them through free agency. Yeah. So this game has a lot of intrigue, not even for the game, but for a quarterback who's probably not going to play in this. Rivals: Baltimore and Cincinnati. Yeah, we don't know. Um. Well, we'll just start with the preview. Six seeded um, Ravens going to the third seed. Bengals. Bengals are um, six and a half point favorite. Ravens were ten seven this year. They were seven and four before Lamar Jackson went down with a knee injury, mm-hmm. and he hasn't practiced or played since um, week twelve. Acquired um, Pro Bowl linebacker Roquan Smith during the year, and that really solidified their defense. After the Lamar injury, which um, was around the same time they got got Smith. They haven't, um, they, oh, this is the wrong stat. <laughs> oh, I was reading the wrong stat. Hold on. I, what I wrote down was after the injury, the Steelers, I mean, the Ravens offense hasn't scored more than 17 points since Lamar got hurt. But Rokon Smith has been good for defense. They literally been winning this past month since Lamar Jackson has been hurt with, um, defense to not turn the ball over. So the defense is, their defense is legit. We just don't know. Um, we just don't know Lamar Jackson's status. And then the Cincinnati Bengals, the hometown, well, not my hometown team, but the, the team of the city that I currently live in, Bengals supporter. I fuck with them still. Bengals are 12, 12 and 4 this season. They're currently on an eighth game winning streak. They started the, um, season 0 and 2, and then they, um, they haven't lost a game since Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Bro was amazing again, 68% passing, 35 touchdowns. The Bengals are rated fourth in DVOA on offense and 11th on defense, so a pretty well-balanced team. They can score and stop people. When Burrow has time to take deep shots, this offense is pretty much unstoppable. Like, we've seen it before when Jamar Chase can get downfield and that part of the offense is unlocked. Like, good luck trying to stop him. And then while he was hurt, um, for a few weeks this season, they started throwing underneath more, and they started getting Joe Mixon and um, Shamasi Piran in the run game back mm-hmm. back involved, and you know their short pass game got got better. So yeah, they're just a complete offense. If Lamar Jackson plays, I don't know how rusty would be, but if Lamar Jackson was playing, I think the Bengals would not cover. I still think they I still think they win, but I don't think they cover. But if Lamar Jackson's not playing this game, the Bengals might blow them out again. 
And it's odd, too, because they literally just played each other the last game of the year. This isn't a, it's an uncommon thing to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be the third time playing them, but yeah, they just, um, they just played this week. So with Lamar, there's a whole bunch of reports coming out. Like he's injured, obviously, or he, there's people saying he's just, he could come back. He's not going to because of the contract thing. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think he's going to play, and I just think the Bengals are going to destroy the Ravens. Yeah, I mean, I think he's not going to play either. I thought he would have been back by now if he was playing. He's just not just going. He's not going to miss all this time and show up for um one game when I mean, he's not under contract. I mean, he is for the season, but he's not. He don't got a long long term deal locked up. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't. You know, he he's he was in the same division as Baker Mayfield. Last season, watch and saw what happened to Baker Mayfield. Yes, so I don't know if that's fresh in his head. He plays with aggressive style of quarterback. He runs a lot. It's a knee injury, so I totally get why he's not playing. But you know, the Ravens should have him locked up on the books right now. Like it's ridiculous that he doesn't have a contract right now. I know he's working without an agent, so I don't know if the Ravens are doing this. But if I if I was an NFL owner, I'm thinking, oh, this nigga don't got a Asia, I'm gonna see if I can fuck him over. Like, that's probably what what the Ravens are thinking. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. They just gave Roquan Smith a hundred million dollars, even though only sixty five. Um, I think sixty only sixty five of it was guaranteed. So it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not a hundred million on the books, but sixty five million guaranteed. So I think his contract's coming, but. If he thinks he's getting fully guaranteed Deshaun Watson money, then yeah, we're just going to have to wait to sound and see what happens because I don't think he's getting that either. Then the last game of Wild Card Weekend on a Monday night, uh, the promotional ESPN is already calling it America's Team versus America's Goat. Uh, that is what ESPN is promoting this game as. I hate these niggas, but I swear to God. <laughs> and of course, you cannot have a rare, because of the expanded thing, a Monday night football game, and you have a chance to have Brady and the pa- and the Cowboys. You knew ESPN was taking that game, especially with Buck and Aikman, and here we are. Yeah, I, I should I should have known. I should have known as soon as um Tom Brady locked in. That four seed, I'm like, oh, Super Wild Card Weekend, Monday night. The Cowboys, standalone TV against the GOAT, Tom Brady. Book. Ratings bonanza. Oh, that, I, I can, all right. Question for you. Is that game going to rate higher than the um, Wild Card game with the Cow, involving the Cowboys last year against the 49ers? Yes. Yep. It's going to be wild. Even though it's a Monday night, how does um because that was a Sunday afternoon CBS game. Mm-hmm. I don't know what typically rates better. I, I don't typically know. Typically, Sunday the night games, the Sunday night NBC games, in like the four twenty five are typically the highest rated games. But what is typically the ingredient on that four twenty five game? The Cowboys, and they are playing Monday, and they are playing against Brady, who has. A whole bunch of fanfare. And I already told you how they're promoting. They already have posters of America's team versus America's GOAT. They're going to promote the hell out of this game. Man, it's the fucking wild card game. We ain't talking about the divisional round. We ain't talking about the conference championship. We talking about the goddamn wild card. How many times you get the extra Cowboys wild card game that we, that, that we probably shouldn't even be fucking playing that's in the whole, first that's, place. That's a, that's a whole podcast. different conversation for a whole, whole different day. But it's the, it's the Cowboys versus Tom. First, Tom. Not even the Bucks. Just Tom Brady. Yeah. Just Tom. Because you already know there's people like, are we underestimating the Bucks? Can they can they get on a run and do it again? Man. Man. You know what? After fucking the way the Cowboys played week eight, 18, oh, I know ESPN's been going crazy the past two days. Mm-hmm. You, you know I don't watch that shit. They've probably been, ugh. Stephen A. Smith probably fucking salivating right now. Oh, just he said as ready. soon as the game is over and the Bucks win, McCarthy might as well just go pack his office. You know what? He's not wrong there. He's not. <laughs> but I'll go. We'll go into. We'll see what I Justin Ackendell thinks. Okay. 
Cowboys were 12 and 5 this season. Dak injured himself in week one, a game against the Bucks that was 19 to 3, where the offense looked pretty similar to how they did in week 18. Mm-hmm. So we, we started the season. We end the season how we started, looking pretty anemic. So that's not a good it's not the momentum that you want to have going into the playoffs. It just isn't. Um Cooper Rush went four and one as the star of the Cowboys and Dak absence. And then Dak returned to throw a league leading fifteen interceptions in twelve games. Yeah. But the Cowboys were winning despite that. Also the Dak's credit, he he bounced back after after some of those interceptions. I remember the Thanksgiving game against the Giants. Giants, he did so. He threw he threw one in the Eagles game and responded pretty well after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely the Eagles game. That, that's the one where he threw that one um, on, like, the third play of the game. It was like a swing pass, and the DN just grabbed it. But, yeah, he bounces back after his turnover. So if he does turn that bitch over, don't. Don't expect the Cowboys to just fold up and fold up and get beat. Cowboys are led by their run game. Zeke and Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard um solidified himself as the number one back, I would say. They're definitely a tandem. Zeke starts the game typically, but we know who the number one back is. It's Tony Pollard. C D Lamb broke out of the season to be a true number one receive receiver. He impressed me this year. He's you know, he's in that conversation. I don't think he's in the conversation with one of the best in the league, but he, he's definitely up there. He puts in their season he puts in their season like he did this year again up and he'll be in that conversation. And then uh, Michael Parsons headlined the top five defense. Cowboys got defensive players. Fast defensive players. It's a fast defense. It's not the biggest defense, but it's definitely a fast defense. It can be ran on, especially Definitely successful to runs in the middle, but on the edges and rushing the passer, it's it, it's a great defense. And then we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, eight and nine on the season. The Bucks were consistently mediocre all year. They never had a winning streak more than um, never had a winning streak more than two games. Couldn't run the ball. I mean, dead fucking last in rushing on the year. Tom Brady let had a um. I think this was an NFL record with 733 passing attempts this season. So it, so their entire offense is literally Brady getting the ball out in under two and a half seconds and dinking and ducking. And that's all That's all I can do. I mean, Bucks won the week one matchup 19-3. And um, I already stated, if the Cowboys played like they did in week one, week 18, this game, they're going to lose, and then um, Mike McCarthy might be out of the job. So they have that to play. For. Mike McCarthy has that to play for, the um, coach for, his job. So I think the Cowboys will definitely come back this game way more inspired than they did against Washington. The Bucks showed us all year they can't run the ball. They, they, they just showed us, like, who they are. I mean, the Bucks literally, you will watch these niggas, and it'll be dog shit performance for literally 58 fucking minutes, and then Tom Brady gets the ball two minutes left, like, mm-hmm. and, and wins the game. So that's their form for success. So you can get any type of margin on this team. They're not going to be able to come back and win. And I just think the defense is going to be able to harass Tom Brady. Tom Brady is a statue. If they can get pressure on him quick, the defense is fast, so hopefully you can get pressure on him quickly before he gets the ball out. And the offense can, you know, play like they played literally any other game. But that fuck, except the last game of the season, the first game of the season. And I think the Cowboys will rile them. I do. But well, I don't know. I don't know what Cowboys team I'm going to get on Sunday. I mean, on Monday night. But I'm rolling with the Cowboys here. They're a three-point favorite. Caution on the, if it, anything under, anything under three, I'll take the Cowboys. Uh, the only thing with the Cowboys, and I, I agree with your stuff, is like since this is the playoffs now, Dak, you can't throw pick sixes. No. That, that that's a no no. That's no, my he, thing. He has to he has to limit these turnovers. He is going to buy us in the ass. If we win this game, we probably have a date with the 49ers, and you can't do that against them. Yeah, so gotta win this game. I mean, Tampa Bay is just very fortunate that they were in probably 
one of the, the worst, worst com- the worst conference, the worst division in the NFL. I was going to say the AFC South. Man, pick one. It doesn't matter. Interchangeable. Yeah. So both the both these Souths and the AFC and NFC were the worst divisions in the NFL, and they were fortunate. They were truly fortunate because there was times against their contemporaries in the a- NFC South where it was the last second and they won the game. Uh, that Saints game on Monday Night Football where they won on the last play. Uh, the Carolina game that happened two weeks ago where it was the the punter for Tampa Bay who saved them because he was able to punt that ball and not get blocked. Like like you said, man, they are ass the whole game until it's the final two minutes and something magical happens. All three all three um games. There was three games against their divisional opponents. Uh, the Falcons too. That yeah. questionable fucking um roughing the passer on Tom Brady that mm-hmm. um, got on the win against the Falcons too. If there was shit, literally in any other division in the league, they would not have made the playoffs. They yes. are under five hundred. They're the only team under five hundred to make the playoffs this year. No other team in the league is under five hundred. And like, you know it's crazy. They have Tom Brady, so everyone's gonna be like, "There is a chance." If this game is close in the fourth quarter, you get nervous. You know what? I might get. I ain't gonna get nervous until there's like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, until there's two minutes left, and he has the ball last. I, I ain't nervous until then because that that Cowboys team is not the same Cowboys team, and it's not the same Bucks team that played in Week One. And over the course of the season, the Cowboys played. Just so much better. Even shit, even on some of their bad weeks than the Bucks played over than the Bucks played this season. Like we were just consistently a better football team than the Bucks for the season. Like that's a fact. Can't be argued. So yeah, if they choke this game away, I know they have to go to Tampa. I know it's on the road. I know it's Tom Brady, but you can't lose this game. <laughs> like you no, cannot. You Niggas jobs are on the line. And you probably should have beat the 49ers last year. So yeah, you stack two back-to-back playoff performances, and you know if we end up losing Tampa. It's gonna be a fucking bad performance. So yeah, like Michael McCarvey's probably out of the job. So yeah, Dak has his legacy to think about. Which whatever he has his legacy to think about. And Michael McCarvey has his job because if fucking Dak loses this game after you throw fifteen picks in fucking twelve games, Nick Chuck already saying trade this man. Trucks that uh, trade Zeke, him. Zeke might be out. Zeke playing for something. He might be out too. Because doesn't his contract end? Um, I think I don't think it ends. I don't think he's a, a free agent next season. But if the Cowboys want to get out of it, they could this this um this coming off season. Yeah, so he has to give he's, them a reason for them not to get like. Like you said, everyone on Dallas is playing for some. <laughs> There's some job you're playing for on Dallas. Yeah, and they they need to beat Tampa because God, if, they, if if Brady beats him again, we're gonna have people like, oh, he should. He needs to play again. Where he he needs to cut it loose. No, like the Cowboys need to be, need to do what the Tennessee, what we thought the Titans did in um 2019 and finally put it into the shit. Yes, because. That that Bucks team ain't it ain't good. He ain't gonna stay with them too. He's gonna be hopping elsewhere. That's what that, I, agree. I I know there's just been so much fucking speculation about him going to a third team, but I just can't I just can't see a fucking what he's about to be forty six years old mm-hmm. on his third team on his third fucking team. They could just hang it up. You have two hundred fifty million dollars waiting for you, waiting for you in the booth. I don't understand it. Like, at this point, I do not get it at all. Why the fuck is he still playing football? And if he goes on a run, you know how the NFL is. Someone will pay him. I hope it's the Giants. Think of any team that's one person away. They they, they need a quarterback. If Tom could just get us to the postseason, everyone else. Think of, like, I mean, I don't know, like, Shoot, is Las Vegas maybe like, oh, we could do it with Tom, Tom and Devontae Adams and Waller and Josh Jacobs if they keep them all. Man, I can see, I can see your boy Josh McDaniel drafting Will Levis or something. My who? That's your that's that's your man's. That's your man's. (laughs) Go, Josh McDaniel's offense. I mean, he's offensive coordinator, not a head coach. He is ass. He's terrible. that, That is your that is your man's. He's terrible. Him and Jimbo. Oh, 
God. <laughs> Him and Jimbo. <laughs> No, because I'm only I was on them since the week one. I was over them since I week key, one. I low key need Josh McDaniels to pull a Kirby Smart on your ass too. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that won't happen. Uh, <laughs> they're not winning the damn Super Bowl. <laughs> Josh McDaniels should have been at home when they lost to Jeff Saturday in his first coaching. Uh, he should have been home. That was the only game Jeff Saturday won as an NFL. Yes, and his ass needs to be home. That's the only fucking. That's the only fucking game he won. And his ass needs to be right back on first take doing NFL top five picks on Tuesday because that head coaching shit over there, that ain't for him. <laughs> and Joshua, take your ass home. Go be an offensive coordinator because this shit ain't for you either, man. Only team I know who gets better with players and gets worse. Fucking wild. No, bitch no, Derek Carr, no bitch Derek Carr and have their and have their best offensive performance against the forty ers of all teams too. Yeah. Jared Stanham. I totally wrote him off and he was going off that game. Yeah, I don't know if that was an admiration or what the hell was happening. I don't know if you can do that for eighteen games. You definitely can't do it for fucking eighteen games, but it was just you know, in that spot, you just did expect you just did not expect Jared Stanham to be able to move the ball. Against um the 49ers defense. Yeah. And you just didn't think that will happen. No, yeah, they're just like, we're gonna sit Derek Carr. Like the place is a mess. Like you're sitting Derek Carr, who was one of the major reasons freaking Devontae even came there. So what the hell is he about to do? Derek Carr's gonna be out the door. He wasn't the problem, but I get how this game is, especially the freaking Raiders. They always have to have a scapegoat. Every time. Yeah, this I mean, is the same team that went ten and six and made the playoffs last year after the Gruden emails. Then you get rid of that coach because you want to make the flashy hire with McDaniels, and then he's ass water. The front office needs to go, and they all need to go. <laughs> but they won't. They'll draft Will Levitt and then go from there. Who's more, di- who's more disappointing, Ra- the Raiders or the Broncos? Broncos. <laughs> Broncos. They're more disappointed because we actually had them on a, in a making the playoffs. Trash. Boy, I had the Col- I had the Colts making the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, well, like in two weeks, you change your thing to the Jaguars. So that <laughs> that, uh, that was the remission. I guess, yeah, because that they, was mm. that was one of the two conferences I didn't know what to do with. It was them and the um, MC West. Yep. And speaking, you know what? Because we were talking about that another team who he he, he needs he needs to go. Aaron, it's time, bro. You, you you gotta get with it or get out. I'm sorry. They lost that game because of him. How do you what get out late by Jared by Jared Goff, who first of all, <laughs> Dan Campbell and the Lions, they're real ones. They are real ones. They said, if we can't go, you're not going. So we're gonna bust your ass at your place. Sunday night football. This is Aaron Rodgers. Win and you're in. And first, let's also think when they were four and eight, they didn't get. He wasn't the reason they were winning the, that four game winning streak. They're winning because of the run game, the defense, and the receivers started maturing. It wasn't because he was throwing like five touchdowns. And then when you need him most, he failed. Let me pull up this damn game. <laughs> it's the Lions. Who literally? I, I mean... Oh my! And I actually wanted them to make the playoffs too because they would have been dangerous. But they would have. I mean, shit. The way Jared Goff has played all damn season, like coaching, coaching. He might be. Uh, and I forget what I forget the offensive coordinator's name for the um Detroit Lions. They've been saying his name all goddamn week, but um, yeah, he's definitely probably going to get a head coaching job. But yeah, fucking Jared Goff. He he might be my favorite shitty quarterback now. He he might be. You know what? Detroit should probably roll. Act- we we all know the ceiling with Jared Goff, but he he proved something to me this year. I don't know what I don't know what the hell it was, but you know Jared Goff was making throws, handle handling pressure. I I don't I don't know what the hell happened to the Packers that game. Is like is this nigga Aaron Rodgers really going to fuck for entire? I mean, honestly, no, he's not. But I also like how. These Aaron Rodgers people, many years ago, many, many years ago, were they were like, man, uh, Favre just retired. 
It's crazy because on the field, it, besides because Favre obviously threw more picks, but like on the field in like same situation stuff, Favre and Rodgers are the exact same. Yeah, the way his like career is starting out, and like you know, Rodgers toward the end now, so we have a you have a full picture. It's it's pretty much the exact same damn career. You know, Brett Favre had the, like the three um the three straight MVPs in the nineties and won the Super Bowl. Um, Aaron Rodgers won his Super Bowl early, and um, he never made it back. I know Favre made it to at least two of them. Yeah, Favre made it yeah. to two. Aaron Rodgers never made it back, but then you know, Aaron Rodgers he was a back to back MVP, and now they're and now they're kind of doing the same thing with retirement. I mean, Brett Favre was holding the Packers hostage for years, and that's what retiring. He I'm retiring, retiring again. But I don't think the Packers ever um. Packers didn't give him a new contract. He was still under contract. Aaron Rodgers just got a contract last year. Fifty million a year. Yeah, he just he just signed a new contract this year. So what the fuck are you doing, Aaron Rodgers? Like, how are you gonna take all that damn money and still be like waffling on if you won't even play football or not year to year? And him waffling is the reason. I mean, that was another. I I do the big thing. So obviously, Devontae want to go play with Derek Carr. Want to be in Vegas. The other one was he didn't know if Aaron was coming back. Like, how do you not commute? And then Aaron's like, oh, I'm coming back. And then Devontae's like, dude, you waited too long. I'm out of here. Yeah, that's crazy. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. They lost that game because of Aaron Rodgers. Like, these stats are pretty similar. It was a two turnover that, um, that killed it. And then just two, two, the two turnovers, two picks. And it, and it was a playoff. It was a playoff game for them. And you just look at the past, like, three playoff games, quote, unquote, with Aaron. It, just hasn't been good, man. No, no, you can't stack up. Yeah, because this was this was a win you're in game. So yeah, this is definitely yeah, three back to back playoff games. Two of them at home too, like yeah. two of them at home. Like you had, you had the Lions exactly where you won. Like the Lions did not have a damn thing to play for except for pride, which we love around here. But yes, that's literally all they had to play for. Like everything was riding on this game, and you know Aaron Rodgers did not deliver. And the Packers as a whole really did not deliver. The Lions had two long drives for um, touchdowns that pretty much put the game out of, out of reach for them. So I don't know what they do. There, that's that's a lot. Detroit finishes nine and eight, second in the NFC North behind Minnesota, Green Bay eight and nine, and then also since we didn't talk about just really really quick because you almost have this from the last time we did a podcast. Pittsburgh almost got in because <laughs> New England did lose to Miami. They just needed um, – no, New England lost to Buffalo. They needed Miami to lose, and Miami held on against the Jets. They almost did it. Like, they were really – that's why you don't leave it to chance. Obviously, if if, Watt, if DJ Watt doesn't get hurt and was out for almost two months, they make the playoffs, which is wild to say. And shout out to Mike Tomlin, man. 16 years, zero losing seasons. Four and one in their last five games. Four game winning streak to end the year. I hate the Steelers with a burning passion, but Mike Tomlin is my favorite coach in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He's my favorite coach. Like I, I support Mike Tomlin, not the Pittsburgh Steelers organization, but Mike Tomlin. And God, watching him beat the Browns like that was just—it just warmed my soul. Also, bell on the Steelers too, but that's besides the point. It, it was just warming to the soul watching that. Good for Mike Tomlin. 16 seasons, no losing seasons. Like, where do they do that at? Top five coach. That's, man, just a quick hit. Like, I don't know what conference you would say is better. AFC East or AFC North. Bengals are 12 and 4. Baltimore 10 and 7. Pittsburgh 9 and 8. Cleveland 7 and 10. Buffalo 13 3. Miami 9 and 8. New England 8 and 9. Jets 7 and 10. If you did like a four on four, I don't know who'd win. So that means like the Bengals would play the Bills. I think Dolphins would play the. I Ravens. think Cleveland. Those are two tough divisions. Yes. I, I will lean. I will lean AFC North mm-hmm. because they year in and year out are always this competitive. So I would say them. I mean, shit. Even the Patriots were um kind yes. of impressing me on Sunday. The yeah. Bills were pay, playing that inspired performance. 
you know, the Patriots were not going away. Like, they were trying to get into the playoffs, too. So, you know, respect to the evil genius Bill Belichick there. Like, yeah, they were. These guys ready. They were in ready a to win make a playoff run if the opportunity presented itself. They were in a win. Yeah, they were winning in, too, too, right? Yeah, they were winning yeah, in. So they, Unfortunately, they, they ran into the Bills. You, that, you weren't going to win that. Two 100 plus yard kickoff return. Nah, you weren't winning. After the ham, no way. That was God. That was, yeah, that, that was. was even like, that was, there was nothing that you could have schemed up on the football field. Nothing. No, no coaching that would stop the Bills from winning that football no. game. It, there's just some spots like that. There's some spots like that sometimes. No, none. And then it's just funny, too, because the whole summer, us included, AFC West was supposed to be the greatest division in NFL history with Devontae Adams, all that stuff, and Russell. And quietly, the Kansas City Chiefs just went undefeated in the whole division. Shame on us. Yeah. Because Patrick Mahomes never, has never lost to them. No, he, he's lost divisional games. What, what, what's to say? He hasn't um, he's never he hasn't lost, lost the division. A, yeah, he's never lost a division, but um, there, there's a stat that he's like never lost. Never lost those teams or something. I don't know, but he's definitely lost to the Raiders before. I don't know the stats, but yeah, shame on us for not thinking Chiefs he's, were running he's away with that. 25. Patrick Mahomes is 27 and 3 against the AFC West in his entire career. Yeah, so we might be undefeated against him in like the past two years or some, something yeah. stupid like that. And quietly, just quietly, they were 14 and 3. Uh, they're the number one seed again this time, just because of the because the uh, Bengals Bills game was canceled, and they so. But again, man, they're number one seed <laughs> for another year in a row, and the AFC goes through Arrowhead once again. And just last quick hit, the year's over. Who's going to be MVP? Who's going to be MVP? Mm-hmm. I really want to honestly say Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just the way the Eagles have looked without him. It's just mm -hmm. been <laughs> yikes. But um, if I had to pick like who I actually think is going to win, Patrick Mahomes. Which would be two by the time. He'd already have two MVPs and a Super Bowl. And he's been, ever since he started, he's been in the AFC Championship game. <laughs> Which... Depending on how this goes, he could potentially uh, depends on who wins. Potentially can do that again. I threw I threw a little bit of money on Kansas City to um, win the Super Bowl. I'm not there yet. I re I really think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be Cincy, man. I I'll tell you what I did off air though. The okay. listeners, listeners don't need to hear. Okay, uh, I, I've been spreading the money around <laughs> the betting apps. Okay. Justin, anything else, man? It's it's playoff, man. This is like this is your busy season because there's shit every week. There is shit every week. Um, nah, you'll right. hear, you'll hear from me next week. <laughs> All right. With that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. Hold us. What do you think? Do you just impose an interesting question? I might put this on our community page on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on YouTube or on the Spotify question thing. Do you think this cow the Cowboys Buccaneer rating? What is it gonna be? I'm intrigued now. I really am. Because I feel like it's gonna break a record. We'll see. And with that being said.